Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. I have my I Will Survive mug with some little cacti on it. Um, my friend Aubrey actually gave this to me, which was super sweet, and I told her it would make a debut on my channel, so there you go. So today's video is going to be my July reading wrap-up. At this point, you guys know how this goes. We're just going to talk about all of the books that I was able to read in July. I felt a little accomplished because I had a lot of bigger books on my TBR for July and I got through them, so that's so exciting. But yeah, let me just go ahead and tell you about all the books that I read in July. So the first book that I finished because I had put this down and really needed to finish it and just hadn't yet, so I went ahead and picked it up and finished it, is Master Artificer by Justin T. Call. This book is so heavy. It is so, like, it's a big book, but it's so hard to hold with one hand. It makes my wrist tired. But anyway... This is the second book in the Silent God series, and I believe there's four books, at least at this time. I'm not sure how long the series is projected to be, but there's only two books out right now, and then he's working on his third, which should come out next year. So if you don't know what this series is about, you're following Inev, who is going to be a Dark Lord. So it's a Dark Lord origin story, and he's told that magic is forbidden, but magic is very helpful for him because he has a disability. And so he's kind of wrestling with what he's being taught versus living out his life and it being really useful and helpful for him. There's also a lot of like mythology tied into it about like if you have a disability, you're seen as evil almost because you're just, you're a child of this god. So there's a lot going into it and this is book two, so I can't really give you a synopsis of this, but I will give you my thoughts on it. So I feel like this series, especially this book in particular, Feels like it has a lot of side quest type things from a ton of different POVs that maybe is now starting to like all slowly tie together. But in this book in particular, you get perspectives of several different characters and they are together at one point. Well, a lot of them are together at one point and then they all kind of split up and then it's just kind of all these different perspectives doing their own thing on their own journeys. And so there's a lot to take in on that. So it's kind of strange but I still want to know what happens in this series and, and I do still like it it's just kind of a lot to it's just kind of hard to swallow sometimes or there's just a lot to get through but I do like the world that Justin T. Call is building and the more character development we're getting with Inev and it's cool to see him getting more villainous even though he's not quite there yet and possibly seeing how he will turn in the end there's also another storyline from one of the POVs that is kind of seeking revenge and has this like crazy story with this guy that's like shadows and seeing that play out was really cool but also kind of ended in a strange way so i'm not really sure there's just a lot of loose ends that aren't going to be tied up yet because it's a series but there's just a lot of stuff going on so hopefully it keeps getting expanded upon and we keep seeing more of an of an Ev's villainous side as he gets into his dark lord thing i think that's going to be really cool but yeah finally finished this and i'll be ready for book three when it comes out Oh, and I did give this 3.5 stars. The next book that I read that had been one of my most anticipated releases for this year was Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This was a pretty quick read and it was a lot of fun. I'm sure you've heard people talk about this since Elliot Brooks has been talking about it recently as well. But it just seemed like a really fun and funny um, fantasy quest type story and it was. It was really cool and darker than I was expecting. So the premise is kind of you're following this girl whose sister is married to this horrible prince and she's trying to save her but in order to take down the prince she has to do these three impossible tasks and if she can complete these three impossible tasks she will be able to take down the prince and you're following her on this quest and she goes on it with the grave witch that gave her the impossible tasks a demon possessed chicken a former knight and a reluctant fairy godmother and this was brilliant the writing in this was so hilarious and so well done and for how short this book is it's like 300 pages but for how short this book is the story was written incredibly well it was hilarious it was dark it was gruesome it was so good there was a plot a horrible prince fantastic humor and a quest so it was just amazing i loved this book i laughed multiple times out loud and i am just so glad i picked this book up because it was worth every second the humor was great and exactly what I wanted it to be and it was amazing and there were pieces of it that I related to specifically like really well, like the part about newborn babies that not everybody may jive with but I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And the humor also caught me off guard sometimes, which is part of the reason, like the deconstructed reason of why I think some things are funny is if they catch me off guard and this one did that quite a bit in a good way. It was also a lot more gruesome than I thought it was going to be initially upon getting into the story but it was also a really fun ride. 
So yeah, I can't recommend this enough. This will absolutely drive me to read more of this author's works that I've been curious about but never picked up because of this. And I ended up giving it five out of five stars. The next book that I read was Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. This was something that I was immediately drawn to because the pitch was what if Anakin Skywalker becoming Darth Vader was the right choice. And so this is also a villain origin story. And you know from the beginning that the main character is going to go dark and he's going to like commit genocide and eradicate like a whole race or a whole people group. This was so good. I loved it. And this is supposed to be the weakest in the Sun Eater series. This is book one in the Sun Eater series, in case you're wondering. This is supposed to be the weakest book in the series so far, which is amazing, gives me so much hope because I really liked this. The pacing could be slow at times, especially towards the middle of the book. And yet I was never really bored when I was reading it. Like there are times where I was like, okay, there's not really much going on. There's a lot of slow moving things, but I wasn't bored. I wasn't like, okay, come on, let's go. Like I wanted it to continue, but I wasn't stopping because I was bored. I still was very intrigued in the story. Following Hadrian and his inner turmoil and his struggles, the things he caused himself to go wrong that like affected him that were his fault, the things that were out of his control that he didn't deserve, and how he deals with all of it, I was really intrigued by. I love how his character develops and how he goes from I can't believe this happened to me to being like, okay, I need to rebuild my life and I need to get this going. Like it was just really cool and I really appreciated it. If you like Red Rising, I think you will really like this book, if not love this book. I'm not saying it's the same thing, but I just feel like if you did like that, you would like this. And I, I liked this book more than the first book in the Red Rising series. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I just think it was a stronger start to a series than the first Red Rising because the first Red Rising, I was like, we're in the arena, the whole book, the whole book. And there's like things like that going on in this, but at least, you know, there's going to be at least six books, which Red Rising will now be seven books. <laughs> but that kind of like the first trilogy kind of wraps up that storyline and then it continues. This is not that way. So it's a very different it's a, it's a different feel in that sense. And there were slower parts, but I feel like more happens. And I'm gonna compare this to Red Rising for a couple of reasons. Red Rising had a lot of really crude humor. And this book I liked because the characters that were crass and were crude and things like that were kind of painted in a negative light. And the other characters were like, you're a bad person, especially when they were objectifying women. And I just really appreciated that. And I just liked that we don't have to rely on crude humor to have a good book. And as someone who enjoys space opera but hasn't read like loads of them, I really appreciated this book and everything it did in his journey and it was just very good. There were parts of it that I was like, what is happening? This is crazy. There was one part that I swear like I missed the reveal of. I was like, okay, we just didn't find out this piece of information because I missed it. I was reading too fast, I was listening too fast, and I missed it. No, it's revealed way later and I you're just in suspense. And I didn't, I was like, what? This is crazy. So yeah, I really loved this book and I'm very encouraged to move on in the series and find out more, especially because this was such a strong start and it's supposed to be the worst one, like I said. So I am super encouraged to continue and am really loving it so far and really wanna know how the rest of the series plays out. Oh, I gave this 4.5 out of five stars. The next one I was able to read was The Blood Traitor by Lynette Noni. This is the third and final book in the Prison Healer trilogy. And it was the end, the end. This trilogy was very good. And I'm very happy to report that this book was no exception. It was very good. It did not disappoint. There was a lot of loose ends to tie up, so it may have felt crammed at times, but it was just so good. There were several surprises in the characters that show up, the way they're utilized, and in the way the story went but overall it was very good. I was glad to see some characters that like haven't played a role in the series yet or to see them, to see how their role came into effect because they were like mentioned offhandedly in the first book or whatever. And now they have a bigger role. That was really cool. I really liked the integration of that. So a lot of characters that we haven't seen before have been able to delve into as deeply playing a role in the, in the overarching story was really great and how it all played together. Calden is still my favorite. I would die for him. He was so great. This book was, and this series has been very heart-wrenching and painful at times. And like, I, there's books that don't get me emotionally. Like I enjoy it, it's fun, and I read through it, and it's a really great time. 
but it doesn't grip me emotionally, make me upset, make me feel urgency. This one did, this one was kind of upsetting. And there were times where I was like, no, or I was scared or like worried about the characters or just feeling like anxious. Like this book did that and this series did that. My only qualm about this book and it being the wrap up of a trilogy is some of the things, some of the problems that were resolved seemed a little too convenient or a little too easy, but it had to get resolved somehow. So I understand that like when you're writing and you're building all of these loose ends and these ties in this world, you have to solve it somehow and you have to resolve it somehow. So it is what it is, but there were a couple of things that I was like, mm, would that happen? Overall, I would absolutely recommend this series. It is real, real, real good, as I've said before. And I'm extremely curious to see what else this author comes out with. And I will read her works because this was like out of the park for kind of a debut series. Like it was very good, really cool concepts, really good magic, really awesome. And if you don't know what the Prison Healer series is about now that I've been talking about this book, basically you're following Kiva, who is the prison healer. She is working in the prison. She was sent there with her father because he was in the rebellion when she was a child and she kind of grew into the prison healer position when her father dies. So she's healing everybody in the prison and then the rebel queen comes in and she has to try to keep her alive because her family is still in the rebellion. And she gets a note that says, keep her alive, we are coming. And so she's trying to keep herself and this queen alive until the rebel family can come rescue her. But the queen is sentenced to the trial of ordeals, which is facing the four elements. And she takes her place because she's so sick that she cannot compete and Kiva does that and if she wins, she wins her freedom. And this series was really good. I I was impressed by this series. So you should read it if you're interested. The next two that I was able to read, I have already posted reviews of, so I'll just kind of put them up here and give you very fast snippets of thoughts and I can link the video down below. But the next ones that I read were Padawan by Kirsten White, which is a book about Obi-Wan as a Padawan, which is the step below becoming a Jedi Knight. And I really liked it. And again, all of my thoughts will be in that video, but it was really good. I gave it four out of five stars. Oh, and I, I just realized I gave Blood Trader 4.5 out of five stars. Sorry. But yeah, I gave Padawan four out of five stars. It was very good, very fun. If you're a Star Wars fan, I think you will love it. But if you would like to hear more in-depth thoughts on that book, just check out that video I mentioned. And the other book that I talked about in that video is Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shay Earnshaw. This is a Nightmare Before Christmas novel. It's set in the events pretty soon after The Nightmare Before Christmas. And Sally is facing her own identity crisis and trying to figure out who she is while becoming a queen that she never necessarily wanted, but she wanted to be with Jack and how she resolves that and the chaos that ensues. And again, if you wanna hear more in-depth thoughts about this book, it will be in the video with Padawan that I have linked down below. But I did really enjoy this. This was a lot of fun. I think if you're a fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas, you should read this because it'll just be fun and nostalgic for you. I also gave this four out of five stars. The next book I was able to read is The Wisteria Society for Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. This book was great. So this book was ridiculous, hilarious, genius, and just so fun. This was like, this book was like The Princess Bride meets Robin Hood Men in Tights in Victorian England with hints of steampunk. <laughs> it's weird but so good so if you can imagine that mashup in your brain that's what this is and because of that i love the princess bride i love robin hood men in tights it was so funny i really liked it it's weird but if you enjoy that you will like this book I wouldn't go into it thinking it's gonna be this really serious type Victorian England book, cause it's not. It's very funny, very making fun of itself. There's a Star Wars joke in here that if you're not a Star Wars fan, you probably would have missed, but I picked it up and I was like, what is this book? This is hilarious. And this story is about Cecilia, who is a lady scoundrel and they basically have these houses that are floating on magic. And it's like they're ships, like they're pirates. <laughs> It sounds so ridiculous when you're talking about it, but reading it is just a whole nother level of amazingness. So she's a thief and the whole Wisteria Society are like pirates, thieves, scoundrels. So they fly in their houses, they drink tea, they backstab each other, and everything is great until Ned, an assassin, is sent to kill Cecilia, but he is smitten with her from the beginning. So it's really funny because he's like sent to kill her and they like fight, but he likes her. It's just so funny. And so she's trying to stop this evil Captain Morbath, who this assassin is working for, 
of taking over everything, eradicating the Wisteria Society for Lady Scoundrels. And it's just, there's nothing like this. There's no other book like this, I think. It's very unique, it's very funny, and just kooky and quirky and funny. It's exactly what I was hoping it would be. Like, I, I went into this thinking, this is ridiculous, it's gonna be funny. And that's what it was. So it was exactly what I hoped it was going to be. And it had me laughing out loud multiple times. I loved it. I was sending screenshots of some of the quotes to my husband and he was laughing and like, what is this book? And I was like, I don't know, but it's great. Like, okay, this is in the very beginning of the book, like page three, but let me just give you a little snippet. So she figured out that Ned is a pirate assassin. Yep. <laughs> just from one look at him by like using deductive reasoning and like scanning his appearance. And she just like slams the door in her face and comes in and she's like, I think he was a pirate. <laughs> after he like called on their house. So funny. So she comes back in after slamming the door in her face and tells her aunt that he's a pirate. And then her aunt says this. Imagine if you'd been out as he planned, Cecilia dear. What would I have done had he broken in? Shot him? Cecilia suggested. Miss Darlington arched two vehemently plucked eyebrows toward the ringlets on her brow. Good heavens, child, what do you take me for, a maniac? Think of the damage a ricocheting bullet will do to this room. Stabbed him, then? And get blood all over the rug? It's a 16th century Persian antique, you know, part of the royal collection. It took a great deal of effort to acquire. Steal, Cecilia murmured. Obtained by private means. It's just, that's the kind of dialogue you get. It's so funny and great, and I was hooked from page three. So if this sounds funny to you and you think you would enjoy it being unique and quirky, pick it up. It's great. I loved it. I think I did give that five out of five stars. And the last book that I read in July was Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. So the premise of this book is that you're following two children who have extraordinary powers. One of them heals and one of them is, has a bluish glow and can melt and mend flesh. And a female detective is charged with taking them across country to an institute where they will be safe and be with other children like them while they're being chased by a shadow man. And that's kind of what you know going into it. So this book was okay. I think it's historical fantasy is the genre it's titled in. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. This was okay, but it just wasn't what I was hoping it would be. And I, it wasn't the story I was hoping it would be. And it also wasn't where I thought the story would go and how I was hoping the story would go. It went in a ton of different directions and a ton of different perspectives. And I don't just mean like three perspectives. I mean like you're in this perspective and this perspective and this perspective, like the three main characters or whatever. And then you hear this other character mentioned and then halfway through the book, he has his own perspective. And there's just so many like that. I couldn't even tell you how many perspectives there are. I think there's at least seven, maybe more, maybe less. But there was just a lot of perspectives and a lot of different things going on. It was also borderline horror at times, which I wasn't really expecting. I thought it would be, you know, creepy, gruesome, potentially, that adult books like this can be. But it was just kind of more horror themed than I thought for being like a historical fantasy. I, yeah, I don't know. And the ending was a little bit of a letdown for me. And it was also just so sad a lot of the time. I was just, I guess I was just hoping for more. I was just hoping for more of it and for it to be a little, not more encouraging, but like a little bit more like you're rooting for them or really cool things are happening, but it was kind of sad and dark, which I like dark, but it's a different type of dark. Some of it, like there were parts that were really interesting that like really had my attention but it didn't really outweigh the slow parts and the odd, like, almost whiplash feeling of all these different perspectives. Also, way, way too many fetuses in jars. Like, is that necessary? I don't think so. I never want to read about fetuses in jars ever again. There was so many, and it's not just once, it's multiple times in this book, and there's so many of them, and it's so creepy. And there's this one character that's like, I guess hallucinating, I really don't know, but it's painted in a way, it was written in a way that kind of suggested to me that he was hallucinating and the fetuses would talk to him and you would hear their voices and they would turn in their jars and talk to him and like put their hands on the jars. It was so hello creepy. And that was, I just didn't like that. That really upset me. It was just gross and I didn't appreciate it and I never want to read about it again and I don't understand why this author did that. So that really toned down my enjoyment of this book, but like I just wasn't super happy with the ending either and it was okay like I 
think it's I think if the premise is interesting to you and you prefer more historical fiction historical fantasy then maybe you'll like this but it just wasn't what I was hoping it would be and so it was kind of disappointing um, I did give this three out of five stars though well that's all the books that I was able to read in July it was a really good month overall a lot of big books but a lot of fun books and books I really enjoyed I would love to know what books you were able to read in July you want to say hi hi buddy say hi oh oh he's laying on me he bumped into something and it scared him <laughs> and he's being a big baby right now it's okay sweet you're such a big sweetie yeah you're such a big sweetie we did mommy hugs and mommy comfort your head's like bigger than mine bro you can't get your whole body up here it's impossible you done you gonna go away now <laughs> thanks buddy i know oh no don't need mommy cuddles. Well, now that I'm covered in dog hair, let me continue. I would love to know anything you guys read in July. And as always, if you ever have any recommendations of stuff you would like me to read or things you want me to read so you can hear my thoughts on them, I would love to hear them. And here's to another month of reading. All right, everyone, well, that is it for today's video. So please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye.